Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome everyone back to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today I am thrilled to have the one and only Justin Herald with us today. Now at the age of just five with only $50 to his name, Justin Herald said about changing the course of his life. Justin created Attitude Inc., a clothing brand that became an international licensing success that turned over in excess of $20 million per year. Justin's success was so well noted that he was named the International Entrepreneur of the Year, the 2005. He recently was also awarded the Future Leaders Award, which recognises him as being one of the 50 most influential leaders of the next generation in Australia. He is also Managing Director of Customer Culture, one of Australia's leading customer service and customer engagement training companies that not only teaches staff the how to give great service, but more importantly, why it is needed. He also just released juniorentrepreneur.com, which is an online program that teaches kids how to take an idea and turn it into a business. This has become a massive global success. His website, justinherald.com, receives thousands of hits a month. He's also author of eight international best-selling books and mentors over 100 business owners each year. Justin is regarded as one of Australia's most sought-after speakers with engagements booked all over the country and overseas, speaking in front of 150,000 people each year. What an introduction. Welcome, Justin. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I nearly had a with all of the accomplishments that you've had. Um, I'm thrilled to have you on my podcast and uh, just, just before we were speaking, and I can't believe it was about 20 years ago, I think, that I had a mentor session with you. Yeah, it is a long time. I mean, I can't remember what I did last week, but I do remember our session. So um, you are a mentor. Yeah. yeah, I'll thank you. And one of the things that I remember from that session, it was only one session, but it really did stick. And one of the things that I remember is one of the things that you challenged me on was my numbers in business. <laughs> And I was crap at it, Justin. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I was out there doing the do. I was a people's person. But when it came to the numbers and getting and really focusing on the results, I was not great at it. And so thank you so much for that because that's really helped me in my business and it's something that really stuck. So sometimes you might have, you know, a couple of hours with someone and 20 years later you may not realise the impact that you've had on one person. So oh. thank you. I've got, I've, got your, I've got two books in front of me too that I've read of yours uh, and uh, one of them has your, your signature in there and it says dreamers never sleep and live your dreams and um, I'm absolutely living mine. So thank you for being able to yeah, talk today and for what, how you've influenced me in my business. Oh, it's my actual pleasure. It's funny you, you pick up, I'm still giving people the exact same advice that I gave you way back then. But um, the reality yeah. is most people actually run their business on feelings, not on facts. And, That's um, right. you know, once you understand the facts, so the facts might be it's not working and then you know what to fix. But if, if you just feel as though it is working and it's actually not, then you're never going to be able to address anything. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's, there's a few things I was thinking when I was talking, you know, when I think about who to have on my podcast, I think really, uh, you know, it, it's a, a big thing for me because, you know, my audience, I really want to serve them. And what I admire about you is not only the results that you have had in your business from, a, you know, 25 to me, that's a young age uh, to be able to achieve the results that you've achieved, but also your tenacity. You know, I remember reading your book and, and, what stuck with me was when you had your clothing range 
and how you thought outside the box of how am I going to generate, how am I going to get uh, people wanting this product? Uh, and I remember, I can't, this is my memory, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you rang or you got people to go into stores and ask for your brand and then suddenly it's like, shit, what is this attitude brand? Maybe we should stock it. And, I was, <laughs> and I'm an old Just Jeans girl. I was at Just Jeans for 10 years and I thought, what a friggin', what, what a great idea because you've created the need for well, the product. I just- yeah, I just answered the, the, the question, really, because the first shop I went to, the guy said, and it was a stupid thing for him to say, but he said he'd never heard of my brand. Well, no shit, Sherlock. I, I hadn't even launched the brand a week earlier, so no one's heard of it. Yeah. I hadn't heard of it. So what what I had, it was just common sense. I've always run my businesses from a common sense perspective because it's a lot easier to do. Um, and I've also run my businesses, which is a big takeaway point for anyone, run it through your personality. So my personality is I like, you know, pushing the boundaries. If someone says you can't do it, well, I'm going to just go and do it now, all that sort of stuff. So I've just grown my businesses that way. And when he said no one's asking for it, all I didn't hear him say I don't like it. I just heard no one's asking for it. So I thought, well, okay, well, common sense thing would be get people to start asking for it. So I just got my mates to ring up the same Blake over a four-week period. And in the end, he yeah. said, yeah, it's such a demand for that brand now. I better go and get it. So that, to me, made sense. I wasn't actually trying to be um, smart about it all. I just sort of thought, well, okay, well, if, if that's the, scr- the itch, I'll give you the scratch. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. So, 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 Justin, where did your passion for business begin? Like, were you, uh, you know, were you the kid that wanted a lemonade stand or, you know, was that you or uh, how did it come about? Uh, look, no, I, I, um, I'm an accidental business guy. So um, oh, the thing I, I couldn't stand and still don't get the get it is school. And none of it ever made sense to me. Nothing was ever yeah. practical. And that's why I launched Junior Entrepreneur for that exact reason. There's got to be practical application to anything we're learning these days. But um, so my whole business or starting business was purely to upset someone in my father's church who kept on telling yeah. me I had an attitude problem. And I just thought, yeah. well, if I put that on the back of a few T-shirts, my mates can go to church. Now, I don't even have to go there to upset her, and I can upset her by proxy. And that's all I wanted to do was one weekend upset one woman. No more to that whole thing. And on that day, people then said, oh, I love your shirt, can I buy one? And over a period of probably three months, I, it turned that into, oh, hang on, this could be a business. Um, then I realised pretty quickly that I had no clue about business. Um, so the first thing that I had to find were smarter people to to learn from, which is something that really still does disappoint me a lot these days. There's a lot of people that don't actually have good mentors or or coaches in business, which is a bit bizarre because that's the cheat sheet. That's the easy way to get to the next level. Um, Yeah, and I just, but what I found pretty quickly was I was sort of naturally good at running a business. Um, I didn't think I would be a guy because I'd never thought about it before, but it seemed to make sense to me um, more so than school. So I also realised why school would have been really important for me to listen at that stage. But um, it, it was business to me is one plus one equals two. That That's, uh, I've always seen it that way. And I, I find business extremely easy. Yeah. Wow. And what, what, what key strategies did you use to build a business? Like from your 25 years of age, you had 50 bucks in your pocket. And then you turned it into a multi-million dollar business. Like if you had to dissect what your key strategies were, what do you think they were? Well, one of them I've already given you all those years ago. Know your numbers. Like you, you've got to, <laughs> yeah. like the, the, the first thing I had to realise is where do I suck? Um, and so obviously I sucked in with money. Hence I had a dollar twenty-five um, when I was 25 at the borrow the 50 bucks. So I realised that money was an issue. Um, and the value of money was an issue in my in, inside my own head. So that was a quite easy thing to then reframe as far as I was concerned. So then putting that into the business side of things, I had to make sure that, okay, well, well pricing is going to be very important. So if I'm going to sell one, one thing, I've got to be able to go and make two more from that one sale. And then I had to make sure that all those margins were correct and all this stuff like came, well, my first year's turnover was 980,000. So this happened really quick. And so I had to well, learn really quick, but that's my personality. I, um, some of my staff think I've actually invented the coronavirus because I love drama. Um, and so it's just one of those things that I really relished in, in 
in that. I love startup of any part of any business that I own. The startup phase is my most favorite part um, because it's things going all over the place at the same time. And you've got to try and basically fix everything, do everything. I love that. And um, so, yeah, look, and the, so the strategies were, you know, have smarter people around me, know my numbers, um, relationship building. Um, when you start a business with no money, you, you don't have the luxury, which I actually don't think it is a luxury, but of marketing and advertising and all that. So I had to learn to think outside the square, which is the way I live my life anyway, um, and come up with creative ways of, of doing that. And one of them, obviously, um, and so it sort of doesn't happen much anymore, was customer service. It was giving people an experience um, enough that they would then want to still do business with me with me after they sold out of their shirts or after they met me the, for the first time. Yeah, because it's like old school marketing, isn't it? Because it's, I mean, uh, and I know from this is my second business. When I had my mentoring business, uh, mentoring session with you, I had a different business. But I know from, from when I had my first business to now, it's so different because we've got mm. social media, you know, it is so different. So the old school way of really you know getting in your car throwing your stock in going from store to store uh, I think it's still so relevant to do some old school stuff now that people aren't doing well does that resonate with you oh absolutely if if the, the businesses that are thriving right through this pandemic are the ones that have actually gone back to old school ways of doing things see I started out yeah. before the internet even existed so I didn't have yeah. that, and I'm glad I did. I think the the amount of social media and internet and all that stuff, all this white noise that's happening around small business owners at the moment, it's getting in the way. See, a lot of people now, and I get them coming to me after they've made a mistake they've never heard of before, and they go, oh, well, this is fantastic. This guy's saying it's right. So they go and do it, and then they go, oh, that didn't work. That's purely based upon the fact the guy never did it, um, but now has become an expert in it all. And so I'm glad I didn't have that. I only talk to people and have input from my mentors who have actually achieved more than I want or I have achieved, which means they've created a pathway that I can go down. I am not, I get a lot of people giving me their opinions all the time of what I should be doing, but if they've never done yeah. it, I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to listen. Yeah. So it's not that yeah. they may not be correct, but it hasn't been proven. Yeah. What has been your biggest challenge that sticks out for you in your Ooh. business? I don't know. Um, oh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I, I guess probably managing people to start off with um, and managing yeah. staff. So I had over 180 of them. Um, but wow. it's one of those things that, and I'm, to be very honest, probably the wrong thing to say, but I was glad that I was able to be a boss back in those days than, than these days. You could get away with saying a little bit more and being a little bit harsher on people without offending everyone. But um, look, I really, I figured that uh, that, that side of my skill set was not a good one. Um, so I had to really yeah. learn how to manage people and the expectations and all that sort of stuff. Because my whole theory, even as an employee myself, was, well, I've got a job, I've got to turn up and do my best. I quickly yeah. realised that other people didn't have that same mentality. So um, whilst I sort of sucked at that at the start, I had to learn how to become better at that. And, you know, and I didn't call it attitude for no reason. So my tact yeah. probably wasn't the best at the time, but that's probably the, my biggest challenge. I, to be really honest, I actually never really remember um, the things that were either challenges or hard stuff because that's I expected that to happen because I knew that I had no clue. So I, I just yeah. knew what I knew and knew didn't know what I didn't know, essentially. So I was expecting things to be tough. I was expecting things not to go correct, uh, correctly all the time. Um, I mean, I lost 36 grand in my first three months um, based upon one, comp one shop ripping me off deliberately. Like that, that was a little bit of a um, yeah. challenge, but, um, but that gave me yeah. once again something to fight but to get back on top again. Yeah. What are you most proud of? Oh, my kids, um, it's got nothing to do with business. Yeah. Like my business is yeah. just the things that I do to get the stuff that I want. It's, it, I've always seen it that way. I, um, whilst other people have their opinion of me and it's nice to hear their opinion, uh, it's not the same opinion I have of myself. Like I just want to make sure that, you know, my kids um, are doing well now. We've got remarried for the second time. So we've now got five daughters combined. <laughs> That's why I have no hair. Yeah. But um, 
that what <laughs> I, well, that's my role is is to set the foundation for them, um, for them to go off and it, whether they want to get into business themselves or they want to do whatever they want to do, I'm happy with that. But um, you know, and it's just about also for me to be current as well. And you probably understand this from a speaking perspective. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. out there talking now, but what they're talking about was great 10 or 15 years ago, but it's irrelevant now. I just got to be really current. So, which means that's why I still do my businesses. But so that's probably um, stuff that I'm within my own self. I'm proud that I haven't just sat back and just um, lived off that past success because I, I think that would be a bit of a waste of a life, to be honest. Yeah. And I bet you with, five, I know from my point of view, I've got one son, he's 22. And people often say to me, who has been your biggest teacher? And they're quite surprised when I say my son, hmm. because he has challenged me from my belief systems to, you know, it's always, you know, why do you do things? Like, why do you do things that way? And he'll challenge me. And I can imagine having five daughters <laughs> That you have, and being a straight shooter, because you're such a straight shooter, which I absolutely love, by the way. Thank you. And having five females around you, and then plus your wife, hmm. and I'm sure some of them, you know, have a more feely feminine energy. I'm sure that they've taught you a lot as well. Oh, they have, you know, and and that's where, like, I've um, softened a lot uh, over the years, uh, so I'm not as uh, angry little ant that I used to be back in the olden days. But um, you know, and it's been. <laughs> It's just life that we're going through. And the thing that, that um, especially with my three new daughters, um, that uh, I really like because they they just know me as, well, they call me Jad, Justin and Dad put together. But um, so they, um, they've they got no clue other than who I am. Now, they're uh, 11 up to 17. Um, and I'll give you an example. We were away at holidays at Christmas time and we were just – body surfing in the surf at Port Macquarie and this guy comes up and he said, oh, you Justin Harold? And I said, I am. And he said, oh, you, you, your book's amazing. This is fantastic. I've met you. And I said, okay, thank you. See you later. And my other three daughters are standing going, how does he know who you are? And I'm glad that they, they I haven't carried on in a way that I'm nothing more to them but just dad, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And you would... In, in regards to coming from a place, because I know when I when I met you, you you were on the speaker circuit, mm -hmm. and how did you transition from a bloke who's maybe uh, you know haven't spoken before, from someone that's going to stand in front of everyone? Because I know you know the the saying is that most people the biggest fear is public speaking, and it's true because I get so many, and that's what I do. How did you transition? From from business owner to then getting on the, on the circuit and speaking, how did you transition and how did you learn that craft? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I didn't. Um, I, I I just like for me, I, I'll go to an opening of a fridge because there could be a great opportunity going on there. So anything that comes across my my bow, essentially, I'll go. Oh, I'll give that a crack. Um, same with right when I was asked a book, yeah. I didn't know I could write a book, but it took me seven days and write a book. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know I could do that until I started. So because I had a lot of media attention around the whole attitude story and the process from day dot, um, and over that period of six or seven years, uh, when I sold attitude, that was a, a big thing um, in the media. And then I had a, a, a conference ring up one day and said, oh, would you come and tell your story? Now, I didn't know I had a story. Like whilst everyone goes, oh, that's yeah. amazing for me. Yeah, I'm just doing what I'm doing. I, I didn't know that that was a big thing, and so I said, I suppose I'll come. And um, so then they they gave me some instructions on the phone. So it was my first speaking gig with six hundred and uh, six hundred fifty people, and um, and so I, they said, okay, so what we want you to do is you need to wear a suit. Um, you've got to do a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> and um, if you can buy a joke book and have some jokes in there, that'd be great. And I said, well, when I'm your puppet, by all means, um, that's what I'll do. But I thought you wanted me to come and speak. And they said, well, we do. And I said, well, just yeah. let me do it my way. And they said, well, it probably won't work if you've never spoken before. And I thought, okay, we'll give it a crack. And I just, like, I know <laughs> there's this whole saying, you know, pretend that the audience is naked. Well, that's not a really pleasant uh, experience when the, you look at some audience members. <laughs> so, so 
I just I just <laughs> thought, you know what, I'm just going to pretend I'm at the pub having a chat with my mates. And because um, my mentor yeah. was a guy by the name of Harry Van Dyke, who was the CEO of Philips. And the one advice that I, always sticks with me um, from my mentor was just to never change who you are because corporate will absolutely love you if you stay you. So I thought, well, I'm going to put that now into yeah. speaking. So I just got up and had a chat and I don't need a joke book. I like using humour because I like being funny. Um, and I absolutely nailed it. And I got the bug. You'd understand this. It's it's, it's so addictive. Yeah. And this is why through this corona crap that we've gone through, I'm like crawling up the walls at the moment because I want to get back to doing what I love doing. Yeah. And um, so, and from that, it just... I've, I've never really, I don't advertise as a speaker. Um, speaking agencies then rung up and said, oh, can you come on our books? And, you know, I do 100, 120 gigs a year now. And it's just something that's just kept on going and going and going. And that's, I think, the art of a good business person or a good business or a good speaker is you, you want to have those referrals from people who have heard or seen your business or whatever. That means you're actually doing a really good job. Yeah, and it's so interesting, Justin, because one of the things that I find that the, the biggest thing that I work on with people that come to me to learn to speak is is to get into their, and I know that we, we, you hear that authentic self mm -hmm. thrown around all the time, but it's really them getting freaking real. Yep. I'd rather them not know where to stand. I'd rather them not know how to use a PowerPoint and, and just strip back of strip back how they think they should be to being who they really are and having fun with it? Well, I've got this very weird theory, and it is a weird for, a theory for some people. I have to be the same person on stage that I'm going to be off stage. Yeah. If I can't do that, that's not yeah. then authentic. And then the audience, once they then talk to me off stage, are going to get a real, and there's a lot of speakers that do this, you sit there and you go, ooh, was that all an act up there? And that then dilutes exactly yeah. what you've said. But, um, you know, like for me, the only person I could be really well is me. So, it, and it just seems to suit, like my um, out my outfit, like is always jeans and a shirt. Like I never changed, even uh, we got cancelled, but I had to do a um, gig over in Thailand and they had a, a just, just before, well, it was going to be in May actually, and um, and the CEO rung and he said, oh, look, we've got a, a black tie event and an awards night. I went, oh, okay, yay. And he said, oh, not for you though. You've just got to come with your jeans and T-shirt. We would expect nothing more. Um, so it's just become yeah. my thing now, which at the start, a lot of the speaking agencies said, oh, no, you can't. You've got to dress in business attire. And I go, look, if I've got shoes on, it's business attire. So... Um, you know, and so that's I never wanted to fit into someone else's model or or mould, and and the audience actually likes that though. Yeah, and I think you know it's funny how you said <laughs> I'm laughing because you said I've got shoes on, so that, therefore that's business attire. Because one of the things that I'm known for, Justin, is taking my freaking shoes off, right? <laughs> and uh, and so for me. One of the things that I think people are so attached to is trying to be everything for everyone and trying to be liked. And I say to my clients, not everyone's going to freaking like you. So just be who you are and the ones that really are your ideal client will match with you and the others you can send them away with love because they're never going to like you, right? And I think... Um, for me, and it's been a journey for me as a speaker and a business owner, is that it it it, it takes so much effort watching watching speakers that are not who they really are to try and be something else. It takes a lot of friggin' effort and energy to do that um, when everyone just wants to see the real person. So with with you the the. The other speakers, tell me about more about those speakers that you're around. Yeah, well, look, I, one of the things I found quite interesting right at the start, I was at a massive um, event and with these two big overseas speakers. I got thrown into the deep end real quick um, in the speaking side of things. And I was at the backstage in the green room, which is never green, by the way, but in the green room. And <laughs> I had one of them come up to me and he said, oh, what do you do to get yourself prepared? And I said, prepared for what? He said, to get up on stage. I went, that's sort of what I do. 
And then he goes, oh, that's that's interesting. And then he went off to the side and started slapping his face. And I thought, man, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that goes on <laughs> into this whole thing. So it was a bit of a weird situation for me to get into. But I, look, I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. But for me, and it's, it's sort of what you were saying before, but for me, I had the licence to now be me on stage. So that's why I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. And you know what? One of the other things that, I love about you, and I thought about you the other day, Justin, because I know that you're really passionate about customer service. Yep. And an incident happened on the weekend. We're renting at the moment because we're going to be we're in the process of building. And I don't know have you, have you ever rented? It's just it's just a whole yeah. different ball game, right? Because um, for me, it's it's like. The experiences that we've had, my husband and I, is that like we're a second-rate citizen because we're renting. And yep. um, we got locked out on the weekend and we rang the, the, the agent, the property management, and they said that we had to get to their office and try and get the keys. So we had to try and get an Uber to the office. We get back and the key that we had was not the right key and they, and they said, oh, well, <laughs> oh well, yeah. you will have to break yeah. a window or something. And um, and then the, then the lady said, "Well, I shouldn't have picked up my phone. Like it was just too hard." And I'm and I thought of you because I just felt, and I thought, "I'm a customer," and I just the feeling that I got, Justin. I thought I never want my customers to ever feel like that because I felt like they didn't care. And they didn't follow up. And, and no. I said to my husband, I joked, and I said, if they follow up today, I'm just going to say we're still standing outside. <laughs> we haven't, yeah. came, we yeah. haven't come in yet. Like we've been out in the cold, living out in the cold for the last few days, you know. Um, and I love your customer service focus. So tell me about your customer culture business. Yeah, well, that started um, everything that I do it always has to be wrong word, but always has to be quite incestuous if that makes any sense. And yeah. it's it's got to make sense to the consumer or to whoever I'm dealing in business with that oh, that would be the next thing or that would be another thing that I would do. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for me to transition new clients and existing clients into a new business. It just, I don't know, that's another common sense thing for me. But the one thing, the reason that Attitude works so well was due to the level of service that we would give it our clients um, and we had three and a half thousand stores around the uh, around Australia New Zealand plus then all the rest of them around the world but I really made sure that I implemented a really good customer focus and culture inside my business with all my staff they didn't have to be mini Justins but they had to understand well, here's my benchmark that I'm setting for the business you have to abide by that and above it if not you don't have a job now this is what I'm saying it's a lot easier to run yeah. business back in those days because I was actually in charge of my own business. Um, and so the one, when I, um, probably about, uh, the re main reason I did it, a lot of people didn't know, and this is probably a good um, thing for a lot of your speakers um, or potential speakers, where my website was all about what I did, plus all, a few other things, but there was a lot of pe people that didn't realise I actually did a lot of sales training or I did a lot of customer service stuff because it was all under the one banner of Justin Herald. Yeah. So what I did was just separate a lot of these things off to the side and have their own individual businesses, which then gave, gave me more of an opportunity to highlight that and, and focus on that. And so customer culture started once again, like attitude started based on me wanting to upset a lady. Uh, customer cultures was started based upon me being upset all the time yeah. by getting crap service left, right and centre and um, and seeing that a lot of businesses don't put any value at all in training their staff, which is bizarre in itself. Yeah. I get it all the time with companies going, oh, I'm not too sure if we're going to invest money into our staff in this area. But they'll go and, and spend hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars on marketing to get a customer to come in, a new customer to get treated like crap. Makes no sense whatsoever. So I've never spent any money on advertising and marketing in 25 years. I just make sure that we give our clients such a great experience that they have to go away and tell someone else about it. That's great marketing as far as I'm concerned, and it's free. Yeah. And um, so that's why I created Customer Culture. Originally, it was face-to-face, um, -face, which I still do a lot of that um, with businesses and here and was globally. Um, and then 
just before, probably about a, uh, a year ago, I, I then decided, kicking and screaming, mind you, to do the online uh, training version of that and programs. I never been a fan of that until I did it and went, wow, people really like this. And so it then opened that whole program up to a wider global audience. Um, funny, interesting, fun fact for you, 74% of our sales are overseas. So Australia still hasn't figured out that if you look after your customer, they will come back. Yeah. So um, it's it's the, the thing that I find quite uh, unfortunate these days is a lot of business owners will employ, they'll read someone's uh, CV and they'll say on their resume, I'm really good at customer service. And I'll go, wow, they say they're really good. Let's give them a job. Now, I, as if they're going to say I really suck at customer service. <laughs> right? So they, they don't then go, okay, well, you're coming into my business. So here's the culture that I need you to abide by and from with your personality yes that's cool but here's how my customers are going to be treated by all of my staff it's got to be consistent yeah and that's what's not happening now um in most places that you go yeah through. absolutely and i love when i saw that you've got your online program with junior entrepreneur that really resonated with me i mean and you talked about this um uh, before in regards to schooling my son being 22 at the age of 15 he's like I, he was you know not going to school he didn't love it he just it just was not the place for him and and I suppose from a parent point of view, we have these, we can have these values or beliefs that kids got to be in school, that's the right thing. Uh, but it was the best thing for us to take him out of school, Justin, because he hmm. learnt so much more uh, at school than he did in school. And so I'm thrilled that you've got this junior entrepreneur online program. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that one, once again, I, I've been a really big believer. And once again, this seems quite bizarre for a lot of people, but I'm very much consumer driven. So if people ask me to, well, I wish you would do X, Y, and Z, I go, okay, well, if you want me to do it, I'll go and do it because there's a demand for it. <laughs> Might sound bizarre, but that's as simple as it is to run a business. But I've had a lot of people over the years, because I've been speaking now for 19 years, and um, when I finish, they would come up and go, I wish my son or daughter could hear you, you talk. And, um, and so I sort of started it based upon that, where there's a lot of parents, and I get emails daily saying, can you help my daughter or son? And, and I'll give it a shot. But what's missing is if they're, if the parent has never run a business or started a business, they can't really help little Johnny yeah. um, with what he wants to do. They'd love to, but th there's no um, help other than then, once again, going online and reading some stupid website. So I decided to start that. I thought, well, we'll give it a crack. And, and this is how I do business. I um, one day put up on Facebook, really looking forward to starting my juniorentrepreneur.com uh, program. And are you walking around? No. Oh, there you are. No. There you are. <laughs> I'm standing in one spot. <laughs> I know because I walk around I on the phone. I was just asking. <laughs> no, I normally do, but I'm going to stand. I'll just move spots now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so anyway, so I, what, what did I get up to there? Um, I put it up on Facebook. Did yes. you get that bit? Yep. Yeah, and so then my wife said, oh, you didn't tell me about this. And I said, well, I only thought about it 15 minutes ago. So I thought I'm going to put it out to the market to see if people would like this sort of thing. I was inundated that day. So went out and bought the um, microphone and all that and did then the next day just spent six hours at my computer just straight into the into the microphone, no notes, no nothing, just straight done. And um, then got my people to put it up as an online program and, and thought, well, give it a crack. Oh, my Lord, I did not realise there was such a demand yeah. for this type of program. It has gone absolutely nuts. And I wanted to make sure that number one, it was financially um, viable for people to do. So it's 79 bucks to teach your kid how to start a business. It's yeah. the cheapest thing. And I wanted to do that because it's a numbers game for me, but I don't want to, I'm a bit old school. Uh, I don't want to really capitalize financially on my information for, to, to a kid. Uh, yeah. I think that's wrong. Um, and so it's really aimed for probably 14 to 21 year olds. Now we've got some eight and nine year olds that are absolutely killing it. Oh, I love um, and that. it's just, it just depends on where, you, you know, a kid's head's at. And they're a lot more savvy these days than ever before. But it really goes through the whole 
you know, stuff on rewards and drawbacks and all the stuff that you need to, you know, get your head around. And uh, look, it's um, it's one of those businesses that has totally stunned me on because I haven't advertised that either. Um, it's, that's a word of mouth one big time. <laughs> um, well, I was going to ask you about how COVID, I know you've got your online programs, but how have you adapted to COVID-19? Oh, look, I'm going to be really, really honest here. I really struggled to start off with because I'm one, number one, I'm a control freak. Um, so yeah. this is now out of my control. And um, and because I'm uh, I'm an old school, I like doing face-to-face -face stuff. So I had to go kicking and yeah. screaming on this. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've been doing webinars left, right and centre and still with, with corporates and they're still paying the same normal fee that I normally get, which has sort of shocked me a little bit. I thought they wouldn't have done that. Um, but the speaking agencies say, well, the content's still the same, nothing different. Um, and so I've done, I'm doing a lot of that. But what I decided to do pretty early on is try to assist as many people as I could um, who n are not good at uh, handling situations out of their control, and the, which yeah. is a lot of business owners. So for me, I love it. And um, so I decided, I said to my wife one day, I said, look, I'm going to be sitting around doing nothing for a while. So I might just give away 20 minute free mentoring slots to people if they want some assistance through this time. And I said, if I can get 20 people, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, at the moment, I'm about 367 of them. Um, You've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but I just, you know, there's, I've seen people in this time, it's been a very interesting, I'm not sure if you've realised or seen this, but it's sort of shown some people for who they actually are. There's been a lot of people really yeah. capitalising on people at this stage, and I don't think that's necessary. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not that, you know, making money is something that, I, you know, my ex-wife doesn't take love as currency, so I've still <laughs> got to make make money i've still got to feed my family and all that sort of stuff but um i just thought you know i i, I want to give back to people and so i, I wanted to keep myself busy as well because i'm not the guy that can sit around to do nothing yeah yeah i, I love i love that and and this is that's the reason why i started this podcast justin because it was like i know how fearful people were particularly in the beginning because all all us humans love certainty we like to we like some sense of control uh, and that just went out the window. And so I know that there were so many fearful people and, you know, I was talking to uh, someone else that I'm interviewing next week and we were talking about the increase in domestic violence at the moment, the increase mm. in people drinking alcohol, the increase in, in the suicide. Um, so this was, it was such a drawing card for me to get on a podcast and, and have people like yourself to help people with their mindset and to to inspire them to move forward in these really uncertain times. Yeah, yeah. Well, you just got to, you know, there's the old saying, you can't fit a square pig in a round hole. Uh, yeah. Well, you can if you force it. So that's where, for me, it was more about having to force uh, myself to do, not, not to do stuff, to, to operate in a different way. Like, I cannot wait until we get, back to proper conferences and stuff like that. I, it's the thing that floats my boat um, big time. Now, you know, doing it, webinars and stuff, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I, I love that audience reaction and interaction. Um, it's something I really miss. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, you can't unscramble eggs either. So we're all yeah. in this thing. You know, they're all in doing the same thing at the same time and having to suffer the same consequences. So, you know, we just have to roll with those punches now. Yeah, absolutely. How do you think you've changed from that 25-year-old entrepreneur to now? What do you think you've learnt over the years? Um, I've, what have I learnt? Um, I've, I've learnt, I guess, that, um, that I actually probably do have the skill set to do whatever I would like to do. Um, I think that a lot of people... Uh, either talk to too many people and get talked out of, uh, out of doing stuff they would like to do, even whether that's in business or in personal life. Um, and they, they have too many, um, you know, white ants around them, essentially, where they're just eating away at their hopes and dreams. So I've just learned that, you know, if I want to give something a crack, I'll give it a crack. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but I, I've actually calmed down a lot. I think the, the 25 year old version of, me now about to turn 50, there are two totally different people. And, um, and you know, for me, it is about 
you know, yeah, I, I like the successes that I've endured and enjoy, enjoyed, 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 I suppose. Um, but it's also, I want to help as many other people. And that's why I love my mentoring side of things. I, it, it is a, something that does um, make me happy to help people get themselves to that next level. And um, yeah, and it's just, you know, I think I, I've just probably become more of a relaxed type person. So, um, I'm probably the only person on the planet that doesn't expect everything to work out. Everyone else seems to think it, whatever I do is going to work. I, I never have those expectations in anything that I set myself out to do. It's if it. Yeah, now I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I was like holding my breath. <laughs> 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 well, we're just going to finish up, Justin. What I want to ask you is how can people get in touch with you to work, to, to find out more or work with you? Yeah, yeah, probably the easiest way is just to go to justinherald.com. Um, and that, that and anyone that um, I'm, once again, this is something I've had in my business from day one. There is no uh, middlemen or gatekeepers to me. At all. So if someone sends me an email, I'm the one that gets it. I'm the one that sent and then replies. If someone rings me, I'm the one that answers the phone. Always been a thing that I've done in my businesses, all of them, and it does take up a lot of my time every day. But it's I wanted to keep that connectivity. I'm here because the average person went out and bought my T-shirt. So why would I now go and separate myself from those people and, and create this uh, wall of people in front of me? So if anyone wants to contact me, just do it that way and you'll get me. Love it, love it. Now I'm going to finish off with, I don't know if you've heard any of my interviews, but I have a JJ's 10 rapid fire questions. Are you ready Go for them? Yep. <laughs> All right. The first one is, best piece of advice given to you? Have a crack. Have a crack. Your favourite book? No, besides my own, um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah, I love that one. Love it. Um, three words that describe you? Mm. Funny, committed, and loyal. Love it. Your biggest pet peeve? Um, going to the supermarket and then not packing my bags. <laughs> it takes so long. I, I, I would never be able to pack bags. I could never have that job. Um, what are you not good at? Patience. Patience. <laughs> well, you, we've been testing that today <laughs> yeah. with, with the um, connections. Describe your life using one word. Blessed. Last. Your, what would be your last supper, your last meal? Uh, chicken and chips. Chicken and chips. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? Oh, wow. Uh, lived with Mother Teresa for two weeks. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, gee, I wish I knew that before. Um, who would <laughs> who would play you in a movie? <laughs> um, my kids reckon it should be Vin Diesel, but that's only because they've got the hots for him. <laughs> 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 and what's one thing on your bucket list right now? Uh, on my bucket list? I've really done most things, but... Um, Probably to get away more with the, with the family here in Australia now. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Justin. It's been so fun interviewing you and I know that you've given so much value to the listeners today and uh, thank you so much personally for mentoring me all those years ago and the impact that you've had on me and I know that you're impacting thousands of people right now just by giving your your great insights into business uh, and into life. So thank you so much. Well, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.